On the table here, I have a LoopDeck CT, the LoopDeck Creative Tool, a reassignable hardware control surface. In theory, this can make your video, photo, music, audio editing faster and more productive. You may be familiar with the product, now we're in 2022. Is it for you? This has been a tricky one, but I think I finally have found a way to articulate my own opinions on that one, so let's get into it now. Oh, and by the way, we have one to give away, so stick around to the end of the video to find out how to win this. Stuart Carroll here, pleasure to talk to you as always. Now very briefly, if you're not familiar with the LoopDeck CT, it is a lovely piece of kit from the packaging down to the construction of the device itself. Premium. Now it's kind of reflected in the price tag, $500 or so. It's quite a serious investment when all is said and done. But let me say, when you get it out of the box, you will not be disappointed with the way it is made. That much is clear. We'll go to a product overview in a little bit, but for now, because I know some of you are familiar with this product, I want to try and add to the discussion that may have already been had. Now you see, beyond the fact that this is a beautifully constructed product, that's the only definitive we have there. I don't know your needs, I don't know your wants, I don't know your budget, I don't know how much experience you have, what computer you're using, what other devices you have, what editing software you focus on, be it music, video, audio for example. So I cannot sit here and say, yes, you have to get a LoopDeck CT. It's a little bit more complicated than that. We need to make a distinction here between beginner and intermediate users who are still on that learning curve and professional power users who have an encyclopedic knowledge of shortcuts are completely set in their ways and are going to find it difficult to adjust. Starting with the professionals, a category into which I humbly place myself, there are three ways I've found that this device helps me in my editing workflow. The first is control. We have new tactile ways of making small adjustments, particularly when we're color grading. And that gives us a level of control that we're not used to with the trackpad. Take the curves adjustment, for example, a very tiny movement on that curves can have a wild implication for your contrast. And it can be quite difficult to control. With the scroll wheel, for example, we can make those minor adjustments that we want. And it's a very nice way to do things. The second is customization. Every single aspect of the LoopDeck CT is customizable for your own specific needs. I have to say the default tools and workspace layout is very logical already, but if you had a specific color grading workflow, for example, you could set those knobs and dials in a way that works logically for you and helps your workflow. The third aspect is where some of the real power of this device lies and it's automation. You can set custom actions and assign them to any of those buttons. Similarly, you can take that one step further with your macros, a predefined sequence of button presses, events, shortcuts that can then be assigned to one single button press. Added control, customizations and automation might sound very exciting for professional users, but it's a little bit intimidating if you're not quite at that stage in your editing journey. And in this respect, I think this product, if anything, is well certainly equally well suited, if not more suited to the beginner side of things. Reason being, you're not having to unlearn certain muscle memories and certain ways of doing things, which may in the fullness of time benefit your productivity, but initially at least is a bit of a backward step when you're used to just doing things in a certain way. If you're a little bit earlier in your journey, you can integrate this into your workflow from day one. And I found this out with other software because much as Final Cut Pro, I kind of know it like the back of my hand. That's not necessarily the case when we go into Adobe Audition, for example. We play around quite a lot of these days with editing our audio. Adobe Audition is where we do that. Adobe being Adobe, not the most intuitive piece of software. Same for Premiere Pro, know our way around the software, but not a second nature. Because the LoopDeck CT automatically loads the profile required for any given piece of software, and in some instances, any given workspace within that piece of software, if you're not so familiar with that software, you have a nice visual depiction of all the various things you can do with that software. It inspires you to find out more, and with a simple button press, lets you do things that you might not otherwise have done. Now, yes, in the fullness of time, you might find that there's a shortcut you could do on your keyboard, but having it there and then as a less experienced user of that piece of software is genuinely valuable. I think you can see why I found this review quite hard to articulate because it's very specific to your own given set of circumstances. So let's take a look at the device itself. I'll demonstrate it a little bit to help you with your own decision making process as to whether this has some value for you. Most of this discussion will focus around video editing, but here we are inside Chrome on our YouTube channel and you can see we have a whole bunch of system workflow options here in the LoopDeck CT. It's a lovely YouTube channel, by the way, so don't forget to subscribe. 
The various buttons on the touchscreen are separated by a grid, but you can swipe left and right on the touchscreen to access more options. Here you can see we have a YouTube shortcut, for example, something I spend a lot of time on. This is the home button here, so we can reset everything if we like. Look what happens to the buttons when we jump into Final Cut Pro. Everything changes, it's really cool, and we've got three workspaces already set up. The editing color and audio tabs, so we can tap on either the touchscreen here or these eight buttons to alternate between those workspaces. So here we have editing tools, color grading tools, and audio tools. Tap the home button again if we get lost and we're back to square one. Now look at this, let's imagine we were editing in Final Cut Pro for example, these are our tools and we want to jump into Adobe Audition. Everything changes for Adobe Audition. Let's go back to Final Cut Pro. We're taken back to the editing workspace of Final Cut Pro. Let's go into Premiere Pro. Lovely. Let's press the home button here because this is the former workspace I was working on before I started filming this video. So let's tap the home button. There is the home page for Premiere Pro. Everything is customized already for Premiere Pro. Switching across to Lightroom for a second. Here we are in Lightroom. I was working on a thumbnail. Let's go to the home page of Lightroom. Now things look a little bit different here. And what I want you to see here is much as these buttons all change depending on what application we're using at any point in time, sometimes depending on what module we use within our software, those buttons also change. So we're in the develop module at the moment, so that's where you do your edits, all your color correction and color grading on your photographs. But if we were sorting out our photos, ranking and rating and categorizing in the library module, everything changes. Now we have our filter options and categorization options. Back in Final Cut Pro, let's check out some more functionality. We'll go to the editing tab there. Now these six knobs down the left and right hand side of the touchscreen, of course, give us added functionality. So we can adjust our clip height here. Pretty nice functionality. We can adjust the audio height, whoops, within those clips. Oh, right, it's gone there, right? Lots of audio height <laughs> and so on and so forth. Is actually quite useful just to have that at your fingertips. We can zoom in and out on the timeline. Now, of course, this is something we can do with the keyboard, command plus or minus, but depending on where your hand is at any point in time, this will be very useful. These buttons can also be pressed. That typically resets the parameter that you've adjusted. So once we get into our color grading settings, for example, we can press two to take us into the color grading workspace. Uh, let's go to the color wheels in this instance, and you can see we've got temperature adjustment in the top left dial there. So let's make a temperature adjustment. There we go really warmed things up a bit. It's nice being able to do this with these dials, I have to say, instead of sliding a little slider with the touchpad. Anyway, right, we've gone too far. Let's press that and it just resets the color temperature back to default, which was 5000 there. The star of the show on this Loop Deck CT is the scroll wheel that sits down here. Depends on what function you're using at any point in time as to how it's used. Note that in the middle here we have another touch screen with a whole bunch of added functionality. So here we are in the color wheel setting. We can use our finger here on the global adjustments here to actually drag the colors in and out of this shot. Again, it's a very nice tactile way of doing things. Let's hit one to take us back to our editing workspace and the scroll wheel is just that, a wheel for scrolling through or scrubbing through our footage. Now in the case of Final Cut Pro, I'm kind of wedded to using two fingers here on the touchpad and it allows me to scrub through it super fast. And this is one of the reasons I love Final Cut Pro as opposed to Premiere Pro, <laughs> which I don't find nearly as intuitive to use. So in some respects, some of this functionality it is kind of duplication and again, it's gonna be very much personal to your own given situation as to whether or not you use it. Within the Loop Deck config software, we can make any adjustment we want to any of these buttons. Now, I don't want to get too bogged down in customization. It's almost a little bit intimidating, especially for beginners or intermediate users. I think it's nice to know that it's an option, but I guess the point I want you to take away from this is you don't need to get into that because things are set up very nicely from the get-go. All that being said, let's say we wanted to make some adjustments to the color grading workspace. So we hit two to take us through to the color grading workspace. You can see we have some free slots. Those little pluses don't come up on the device itself, but you can see that we have some space there to jam in some extra commands. So drop down on the color grading in the Final Cut Pro actions. Let's find something that could be useful. Well, for the sake of argument, reset hue. Let's drag that across and bingo, we now have a special attributed button for reset hue and you can see it's come up already there on the CT itself.
So folks, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I think it's cool and at the very least it makes it look like you know what you're doing when you have one of these sitting on the computer because it does look cool and obviously that's the most <laughs> important thing. Anyway, if you want to get your hands on one of these, we have one to give away. Pretty nice of Loop Deck to provide us with two, uh, one of which can be yours. Download a copy of our free video editing software guide. That is how we will be able to uh, track your entry, if you like, into this little contest. And then we will notify you by email in a week's time or so if you have won it. Pretty nice high value giveaway, if I may say so myself. So don't be a stranger, stay in touch and get yourself a copy of that free ebook. Do leave your thoughts below. Some of you will have lots of experience with these kind of devices. Always interested to hear what you have to say. Subscribe to the channel for more fantastic content and we will see you next time.